Here's some examples of how to write expressions from word problems. I ordered some books online for myself and friends. Each book costs $11, and the store charges a flat rate for shipping of $20. Write an expression for the cost of buying n books. Now this problem is not asking for a particular number answer. It's not asking me for the actual cost of buying a particular number of books. It's asking me for a formula that would allow me to calculate the cost for any number of books. But I find it easier to think about a particular number, and so in order to help me to write that formula, what I'll do is sometimes I'll start by picking a number and using that as an example, writing down my work carefully, and then using that to help me write the formula. I'll show you what I mean. In this case, we uh, have $11 for each book, and so I'll underline that, oops, because that's some useful information. So each book costs $11, and the store charges a flat rate of shipping of $20, so I know that that's going to be part of it. So I am going to, instead of thinking about N, I'm going to think about 10 books. 10 is often a number that is easy to multiply, and uh, you know if you're using decimals, so I like to use 10. All right, so each book costs $11, so that I know that I have to do 11 times 10, and the store charges an extra $20, so 11 times 10 is plus 20. That's what I'm going to do to find the cost. 11 times 10 is 110 plus 20. That equals $130. All right, that was pretty easy. Let's do a different amount. Let's go ahead and say for seven books, just so we can see what changes. All right, so this is going to be 11 times 7 plus $20 for the flat rate of shipping. 7 times 11 is 77 plus 20, that's 97. Okay. So from those two examples, I can see I always do 11 times the number of books plus $20 for shipping. And the expression asks for buying n books. So if I just take the 10 or the 7 out and instead write n in that place, I have the expression 11n. 11 times n plus 20. Let's take a look at this one down here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read it with you. Louis had a savings account with $128 in it. He started to save $24 per week. How much money will he have in his account after W weeks? I'll give you a hint and then uh, I'll let you work it out yourself. You can pause the video and uh, I'll give you the answer. I like to go and take a look at the numbers and underline $20, $24. And since it's $25 per week, that's useful for me to know. So I'll underline all that. And then, of course, we've got his account, savings account, starting with $128. So try it. Maybe try it for 10 weeks. Try it for five, six, seven weeks. And then see if you can write your formula. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at that. If not, pause now and then, uh, and then do it. But here we go. So it's going to be 24 per week, so it will be 24 times 10. And then I have to add 128. That's going to be 240 plus 128, so what's that, 368? But if instead of 10, I put W weeks instead of 10 weeks, my formula is 24W plus 128. There you go. Let's look at another example. Sandra sells postcards at the beach. She sells each card for $3. She spent $80 to get the cards printed. How much profit will she make from selling X cards? All right. Use my favorite number here, 10 cards. How much profit will she make from selling 10 cards? Well, she gets $3 per card. Oops, I'm rushing a little bit here. So let's go ahead and underline some of our information. 
each card for three dollars and then she spent 80 to get the cards printed so the three dollars for each card tells me I have to do three times ten and then since she spent 80 I've got to take 80 out of my profit Ooh, hopefully you have some experience with negative numbers three times ten is thirty 30 minus 80, it's actually negative 50. She still owes $50 or is, has lost $50. If she will do seven again, sell seven cards, it's gonna be even worse, but three times seven and then take away the 80, that'll be 21 minus 80 is going to be negative 59. And again, looking at what's uh, what's the general rule here? What do I do every time? I do three times the number of uh, cards and then I take 80 away. So it's going to be 3x minus 80. Alright, go ahead and take a look at um, this next one. Uh, at this next one here. Leslie borrowed $50 from her brother she makes $12 per hour at her job. How much money will she have after working H hours? All right, let's say 10 hours. Why don't you go ahead and pa um, pause, work it out, and then we'll come back with the, uh, with the answer. All right, hopefully what you've done is you've noticed it's going to be 12 per hour and then she borrowed 50. So for 10 hours, it's gonna be 12 times 10. And then we have to take 50 away from what she owes from her brother. So it's gonna be 120 minus 50 will be 70. And the general rule will be 12 times the number of hours, take away 50. All right, one more set of examples. There's a barrel in my backyard with 80 gallons of water in it. The water is dripping out at a rate of 4 gallons per minute. How many gallons will be in the barrel after M minutes? All right, so let's take a look here. I notice it's going to be 4 gallons per minute. That's important. We start with 80 gallons of water. I'll use my old friend here, 10, for M. So I want to think about what happens for 10 minutes. Well, if it's four gallons per minute, I know that's four times 10. And once I get that answer, 40, I notice that there's a barrel in my backyard with 80 gallons of water in it, and the water's dripping out. There are 40 gallons have dripped out. I actually have to subtract that from 80. In this case, what I have is going down. In the other two situations, or the other two pages, we had amounts that were going up. But now we have water that is, uh, the amount of water is going down in the barrel, so we have to subtract that. So 80 minus 40 is 40. If we do seven minutes, that's going to be four times seven, and I have to take that away. So 80 gallons minus 28 is going to be uh, 52. So notice again, I started, uh, I subtracted this from 80 again rather than subtracting it from the 40 because we're assuming that we're sort of starting over. Every time you consider a new number of minutes, you assume uh, what if it were seven minutes instead of 10 minutes, not in addition to or not after that. So after 10 minutes, there'll be 40 gallons left. After just seven minutes, there'll be a little bit more. There'll be 52 gallons left in the barrel. Well, what happens every time? I always start with 80. I take away four times something, and that's the number of minutes. So it's going to be 80 minus 4m is the rule. All right, this is our last example. So go ahead and uh, pause this, uh, take a look at this problem, work it out for yourself, and then you can come back and check your answer with me. All right. 
So when I look at this, I notice every day they use 1.5 pounds of cheese. We start with a 35 pound block. How much cheese will be left after D days? Well, for 10 days, that's gonna be 10 times 1.5, and that's 15, but we have to take that away from the 35. So 35 minus 15 is 20. And what I'll be doing every time is I'll be taking uh, the number of days, multiplying it by 1.5, and then taking that away from 35. So the rule will be 35 minus 1.5D. There you go.